This video is sponsored by Lingoda. Hey, you're here with Ben and welcome to Near From Home's Central Munich Dessert Tour. Let's get started. So you guys out there really seem to like food videos and well, I really like dessert. So I think we can make this work. However, for this video, what I really want to do is focus in on central Munich, starting right here in Marienplatz. We can go further out of field in other videos if this one does well, but I really want this to help everyone. So whether you're a tourist or a local alike, you're gonna be coming here. So the question is, where should you be getting your treats? I have got a ton of recommendations. So let's get started. Let's jump right in and experience some authentic German Cafe Kuchen culture just around the corner. Here in this wonderful courtyard at Cafe Gugelhof, which is quite possibly the best cake you can get here in the center city. However, Camille loves Cafe Kuchen culture a little bit more than I do, so I think I'll let her talk all about it. So I really love Café Kuchen culture because I was introduced to it at a pretty young age by my German Oma. I was so obsessed with it that in high school for a statewide German culture competition, I made a shoebox diorama of a traditional German konditorei. In my opinion, this was the best entry and I was snubbed. <laughs> and I have not let it go, University of Memphis German culture competition. Café Kuchen culture is a wonderful thing that Germans do. Usually on a Sunday morning, they get together with friends to socialize and enjoy some delicious cake and coffee and it dates all the way back to the 1600s when coffee was first introduced. As a fan of cake and an addict to coffee, I wholly support this culture. So Ben is pacing himself for our next dessert, so I'm gonna take the hit. Normally he gets sort of a chocolatey cake and I counter him by getting a very fruity cake. So today I've gone with a blueberry cake. Normally I go with strawberries or cherries, but I'm kind of going out on a limb with this one. And honestly, can you believe that this courtyard is just one jitty away from Marienplatz? It is so quiet and so secluded feeling. People just don't seem to know about this place. Whoa. I'm just gonna show the, the cake here. It's so nice looking. Okay. This is really excellent. The blueberries taste quite fresh and the sourness of the blueberries balanced against the sweetness of the rest of the cake is really lovely. I'm always so shocked at how good the cake is here because people who travel frequently will know that the places that are close to the central tourist hubs just don't really offer food that's really high quality, but here the cake really holds up. If you're in the area, which I know you are, Marienplatz is in the center, I would recommend coming here. This is the best cake you can probably get in the center city. But now I'm gonna finish the cake and my coffee. See you at the next dessert. And it's absolutely wild because this unassuming passageway is the only thing separating the oasis that was that cafe from central downtown Munich and the tourist madness that comes with it. Now to get to our next stop in this central Munich dessert tour, we don't have to walk far. Essentially, just around Marienplatz and over to the Victualia Mark where we're gonna be getting Kaiserschmarrn at a balcony that I have not yet been to, though I'm kind of saving myself for the lard fried donuts later, so I think you might have to take the hit on this one as well. All right, so next up, we've got a place I've really wanted to go to for quite some time, and that is Cafe Kaiserschmarrn. Now, I haven't actually been here before, though I've been to this balcony plenty of times as it's kind of just owned by the local Richard, which is just a classical Bavarian bakery, bit of a chain. Now, I've heard really great things about this place, but not the food itself, mostly just the ambiance. I mean, just five paces away from both the Victualia Markt and Marienplatz, this place is busy and incredibly beautiful. But will the food actually hold up? Is it gonna be any good and should you go here? Well, that's what we're gonna find out. So, könnten wir äh, ein Cappuccino und auch ein Apero Spritz haben? Und dann, äh, ich habe nicht das äh, finde in die Karte, aber haben Sie Kaiserschmarrn? Ja. Und mit Vanillesoße oder nur Apfelsoße? Vanillesoße. Oh ja, bitte. Dann mit Vanillesoße, bitte. Vielen Dank. Danke. Okay. 
Now that it's actually in front of us, what exactly is Kaiserschmarrn? It's kind of simple. It's really just cut up pancakes with powdered sugar on it. This one's a little different than what I've had before because it's got raisins in it, so I'm excited to try that. In Germany, it traditionally comes with applesauce, but we fell in love with the Austrian variety, which comes with vanilla sauce. I'm gonna try it now, but without the vanilla sauce. Mm. Okay. So it's super rich, it's about this thick, like a couple centimeters thick, and you can really taste the fried doughiness, and the raisins add a nice extra kick. It is a little bit dry, but that's why it comes with sauce. So let's try it. Now that we're all sauced up, let's see if this improves it at all. Oh my god, oh my god, too big, too much, <laughs> too much. I don't wanna like shove that into my mouth like some sort of animal. Still a lot. Okay, here we go. But yeah, the sauce is really nice. I'm not the biggest fan of vanilla sauce. I think a lot of times, especially in the United States, it tends to be really rich, really sweet, very overpowering. It kind of covers the flavors of the thing that you're eating. But in this instance, I think it complements it instead. And that's something that I find to be true in general when it comes to German desserts. They do a really good job of balancing the flavors. One flavor doesn't just overpower another within a dessert. So the fried notes still come through, but now we sort of have this more complete picture that tastes really delicious. But now I'm gonna enjoy the rest of the dessert and this atmosphere. I think I can go down three stairs and still talk to you guys. Okay, one, two, three, don't die. Okay. <laughs> So, how was it? Well, I'd say the ambiance lives up to the reputation. It's probably one of the nicest cafes to hang out in, at least as far as central Munich is concerned. How was the food though? Well, I'd probably call it a solid six out of 10. It was really good, but not purely exceptional, but I might be biased because I've had some really good Kaiserschmarrn out in the mountains, which is my recommendation. If you want that nine out of 10 stuff, you gotta leave the city. But if you wanna have a really good time in Munich, yeah, I'd recommend you go here. I mean, ultimately, the Kaiserschmarrn Cafe is part of the local Richard, which is part of a chain of cafes, so you're not gonna get that true hole-in-the-wall bakery experience, but what you do get is pretty damn magnificent. You do need to be a little bit comfortable with some crowding, though. It's central Munich, after all. Everyone's here. And I hope you don't mind, but I'd like to take just a short break from destroying my body on camera for your entertainment. And instead, I want us to expand our minds with this week's sponsor, Lingoda, an online language learning school that can connect you with fantastic teachers all around the globe at almost any time of the day. Longtime viewers of the channel will know that I've been using them for ages now, and honestly, I really, really like it. Now, maybe you've noticed that your boy here can order coffee and cake like a champ, even ask questions about the menu with ease, but quite frankly, it hasn't always been this way. I used to struggle a lot with my vocabulary and confidence, and through consistent lessons with Lingoda, I have seen massive improvements in both. Not to mention I've had a lot of good practice on my pronunciation, which is still bad, but I'm being understood a whole lot more frequently. So that's a win in my book. And if that sounds interesting to you, then boy, do I have an offer you need to hear about. Because in just about a week or so, Lingoda will be embarking on their July Sprint Challenge. You see, if you're willing to commit to 30 lessons in 60 days and you complete it, they will give you 50% of your money back. And for the crazy ones of you out there that can do 60 in 60, they will give you 100% of your money back, which honestly is an incredible deal. And if you've checked out my language learning in Germany video, then you'll know that I wholeheartedly believe in these intensive courses. I think they're fantastic. I'd highly recommend you sign up, hold yourself accountable, go to every lesson and get your money back. It is an incredible incentive. So please check out my links in the description box below. It starts soon, so don't hesitate. Use our code so they know you came from us because that really does help the channel. And of course, to help you out as well, it'll give you some money off of your deposit. A total win-win. But now, if you don't mind, I need to actually get ready for my lesson starting in five minutes, and you need to check out this next dessert. So let's say you really do want to hang out in central Munich near the Fictualium Mark, but Cafe Kaiserschmarrn really wasn't quite up your alley. You're not in the mood for something that heavy. I totally get it. Maybe you're not even in the mood for a sit down. You need something portable. 
Well, do I have a suggestion for you, as right around the corner is just the thing you need. Cafe Frischut for some traditional German donuts. All right, so now they do have outdoor seating at the cafe, but honestly, I've been sitting enough today already and I really want to walk around the market. We went for two different donuts, one for me, one for Camille, one jelly-filled and one just plain. And I know what you're thinking, you're getting donuts in Germany. That sounds like an American thing to do for me if I've ever heard it. But what's actually really interesting, even though we may not classically associate them with Germany, they have been popular in these parts for a hell of a long time. In fact, the very first recipe book printed on the Gutenberg printing press had a jelly-filled donut recipe. It doesn't get more historical than that. And I know I'm not talking about beer gardens today. This is a dessert video, but the beer garden in the Victoria Markt is one of my favorite in all of Munich. But uh, a beer garden review is for another day. Let's talk about donuts. Jelly donut. Okay, so here, oh God, I already have oh, sugar all over my hands from this cup pen. Okay. I don't know if jelly donut time was a good idea. No, it's starting to deflate already. Okay, it's a donut, fried in lard with tons of sugar on it. And I think there's some apricot jam filling in it, right? Oh, I love apricot. Oh, well. Now I'm eating it. <laughs> Maybe I should have gone with the jelly-filled donut. Yeah. Mine's just gonna be pouring now. Okay, so here's what it looks like. It's a little mangled because we've been shooting the thumbnail for a little while. So it's kind of deflated and deformed a little bit. So let's try it. Let's see how it tastes. Oh my, wow. Interesting. So you remember how when we had Kaiserschmarrn just a minute ago, I was talking about how the constituent parts of the Kaiserschmarrn don't really overpower each other. The apricot filling in the middle is so sweet that it almost overpowers the sugar on top, which is just, you know, the essence of sweetness. That's not very German. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. One more bite. Oh. Well, <laughs> I took a bite and all of the apricot filling just kind of like squelched into my mouth at once. It's a little more liquidy than I expected. The apricot might be a little overpowering, but overall, I'm still enjoying this. And does anything beat a fresh donut, though? I've had a ton of, like, Dunkin' Donuts when I lived in the United States, and they just do not compare to a right-out-of-the-fryer donut. Well, let's try the schmaltz people. Super weird. It's weird that the donut hole isn't a hole. It's just thin. So what I went with and couldn't stop myself from already taking a bite of was a schmaltz noodle, which is just a really rustic style donut fried in lard. And they throw some sugar on top to, I don't know, try to balance out that richness with sweetness. A classic pastry technique. I have a feeling this is gonna be really messy. Super greasy, covered in sugar. I'm gonna need to wash my hands after this. That makes me sound like such an old person. Like, where will I wash my hands? Well, I know where. It's a fountain just around the way. But enough about hygiene. How does it actually taste? It's fantastic. I mean, I don't think there's much to add from what Camille said. What beats good quality dough fresh out of the fryer? Pretty much nothing. I find it a little weird that there's no hole in it. It's a thin bit of dough and I really like it. I don't think I can finish the whole thing. I wasn't really expecting to speed run diabetes today by just having so many desserts, but I don't like donuts. I mean, I lived in America for a really long time and I never understood why they eat them. It's not like a waste of calories to me, but man, this is really good. If you're worried about the overpowering sweetness of the filling, you will not go dissatisfied with this. A solid choice. I keep getting tongue tied and I think it's because I've eaten so much candy. <laughs> Like my tongue just tastes gross. Like my mouth is terrible. Look, I don't know guys, filming an entire dessert tour video in one weekend has not been my smartest decision, but uh, over the past couple of weekends I've been sick and I've been unable to film. So it's just been piling up and up and here we are eating like what? Six or seven desserts in one weekend. I am dying. And I feel a little bit disappointed too, because could you imagine if you told your younger self that you'd spend all weekend making content about eating as many desserts as possible, and I'm sitting here complaining. I think teenage me would hate current me. That's probably a good thing though, right? Luckily though, the next suggestion is the smallest and perhaps tastiest of them all, so I'm sure it won't be too hard to stomach. And that's True and 12 ice cream over by the Gasteig here in Heidhausen. They offer a rotating selection of 12 high quality flavors, all of them with a little bit of a twist and incredibly high quality ingredients. In my opinion, it has to be the best ice cream in the city. 
Now, Camille's gone on inside to order. It's cash only, so be prepared. And I have a feeling she's gonna choose pistachio, which doesn't sound too exciting, but A, she loves pistachios, and B, they import them from Italy, so it's gonna be really good. Now, personally, I'd probably go with the happy monkey, but I cannot handle an entire dessert to myself. We need to split this one, and it's Camille's choice. I have not had this ice cream for over a year. I am very excited. I got the pistachio. It is my favorite ice cream flavor. So I knew you would. Oh God. I mean, I was really tempted with the green tea and the lemon mint and the black sesame and like five others, but I had to go with my classic favorite. So let's see how it tastes. Okay, here we go. Whoa. Okay, so I was expecting it to taste like pistachio. I forgot that this is actually roasted pistachio. I just wasn't expecting roasted notes. That is so unique. I've had a lot of pistachio gelato in my time, especially when we were in Italy, but nothing compares to this. This is excellent. Wait, are you saying this is better than the gelato we had in Italy? Controversial, but yes. There's just so much more complexity of flavor here. I feel like a lot of the pistachio gelato I had in Italy was just pistachio flavor, but they've just gone above and beyond to add depth to this. There's no artificial flavoring in this. It is just pure uncut roasted pistachios. If you're coming to Munich, I know you're not thinking about gelato, but you definitely need to check this place out. And though I'd love to continue on to more delicious indulgences, I think we're gonna need to save them for another day. But what do you think? Have you been to any of these suggestions or are you just raring to go? And most importantly, do you wanna see more Munich food tours? If so, comment below with your support and even better, do you have any recommendations for me to try? I'd love to hear them. Now, if you're looking for something else to watch, might I suggest my locals food tour? If you haven't seen it, then you definitely need to, as I've received a lot of comments thanking me for them already and I don't want you to miss out. And finally, thank you all so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing, and I'll see you all in the next video, no matter where that might be.